Welcome to our worship service today. My name is Rob Edwards and I'm one of the chaplains with Wesley Mission Queensland. And today I have Chaplain Malcolm helping me to lead this worship service. And as we come together today, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Today as we come together, we light the Christ candle to remind us that Christ is the light of the world and that in him there is indeed no darkness. Our call to worship. The Lord is our shepherd. God is the gate through which we pass to safety. The Lord fills our cup to overflowing. God is our guardian. We will live forever in God's presence. And for this, we bless the Lord. Let's sing together our first hymn this morning, How Great Thou Art.
And now we come to our prayers of invocation and confession. Let us pray. Loving God, in this moment, we pray that we'll recognize your voice in all the noise of the world, through all the chatter in our heads, amongst all the competing calls in our lives. We want to hear you. We want to be guided by that quiet, calm, inner voice that calls us to live fully. Gracious God, for living small lives, we ask your forgiveness. For staying silent when our ideas could contribute to the whole, for pretending to have no opinion just to keep the peace, for not hearing the dreams of others, for fear of having our own thoughts diminish. Gracious God, for living small lives, we ask for, for your forgiveness. For listening to those voices within us that tell us we're worthless, for avoiding challenges, for fear of failure, for treating our dreams as nonsense. Gracious God, for living small lives, we ask for your forgiveness. For believing that one person cannot make a difference, for assuming that someone else knows better and will take responsibility, for allowing ourselves to become numb to the suffering of others. Gracious God, for living small lives, we ask your forgiveness. And our declaration of forgiveness today. People of God, hear this. You are not made to hide. You did not receive life to quench it. You are human beings made in the likeness of God. You are made for life that is full of overflowing. So then hear Christ's words of grace to us. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let's sing our next hymn together, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. Our Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of John, 
John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Let us hear the word of God. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech of them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was a kid growing up in England, we'd sometimes go to visit um, one of my aunties and uncles who lived on a farm. And it was a great place to visit as um, it had lots of barns and the land had forest areas on it. And it was actually over the top of an old mining area. So it was mine shafts below the, the ground and remnants of the mining era uh, still above the ground. There's old buildings and things. So as a child, it was a great place to, to go and visit and let your imagination run wild, um, especially if you're reenacting favourite TV shows. And for me as a kid, that was television shows like Doctor Who and um, movies like The Great Escape. Another reason that I liked to visit the farm was that the farmers would sometimes get me to help out with different tasks around the farm. And one of those tasks was when the farmer needed to go and get the sheep from one of the back fields. I used to go for a walk with the farmer and his dog to get the sheep. And I remember it was a quite a long walk, or it certainly felt that way as a child. And all the way down to the, to the back field, I'd be chattering away, asking questions and making comments about things that I'd observed on the farm. And, you know, growing up when you're a kid and seeing things like foxes and rabbits and just different things, just quite exciting, getting chased by the geese and all of that kind of thing. So it was quite a longish walk and um, we'd get to go to this paddock that was way up the back of the farm. And when we arrived and got through the final gate, the, um, the farmer would make this strange call, this strange sort of noise. I thought it was strange. But all of the sheep that were in that, that paddock, that field, would come running towards him. Now, if I can describe the, the back paddock a little bit um, more, it was actually a, a paddock that was on a hill. It was quite a large hill. The circumference was very large and it was quite steep, had a monument at the top. And um, so sometimes the sheep would be right over the other side of the hill and um, may not have been able to hear the farmer. So what the farmer would do is um, he would get me to run to the top of the hill and um, chase and, you know, sh chase any sheep, encourage them to, to go towards the other side and then they'd be able to hear his whistle. And um, that would work and, and, and they would hear it and so on and so forth. So the farmer would call his sheep and they would come running to him because they knew him and they trusted him. And as they gathered the gate, at the gate, he would then open it and he'd lead them to the shed where they were going to be kept overnight to protect them from the cold weather. Now, one of the things I noticed about the sheep was each one of them had a coloured mark or a brand on them that indicated that they were one of his flock. That was a visible mark of ownership on each one of those sheep. 
you know, it's a way that that farmer knew his sheep. And the Bible tells us that there's a way that we'll be known as members of the flock of Jesus. And that information is found in, in uh, John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. And it says this, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you will also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have, lo you have love for one another. And you know, therein lies an amazing truth. Our point of difference, our visible mark of ownership by Jesus is in that, that we would love one another. And by this, we would be known as his disciples. And of course, we know that love is a doing word. Love requires action. It's not just a word. Jesus says, I am the door. And that's an odd statement, isn't it? I am the door. What did he mean by saying that? And in Jesus' days, sheep and shepherds were common. Much of Judea was, was rocky, and it was better suited to grazing than cultivation. During the day, the sheep would graze in unfenced land under the watchful eye of the shepherd. And at night, the shepherd would gather them into the sheepfold for protection. Now, there were two kinds of sheepfolds. In a village, there would be what they'd call a communal sheepfold with a strong gate. Sheep from several herds would be kept there. In the morning, each shepherd would call his sheep and those who belonged to him, they would come running. However, the shepherds couldn't afford to spend many nights in the village. There just wasn't enough grass close to the village to support their flocks. So shepherds spent most nights away from home in the lonely places where sheep could find grass to eat. In those lonely places, sheepfolds were much simpler, just a solid fence with an opening for the sheep to enter and to depart. And at night, once the sheep were safely inside the sheepfold, the shepherd would lie down across the opening and fall into a light sleep, ready to awaken at any sign of danger, ready to do battle with any wild animal that might attack the sheep, ready to confront any thief that might try to steal the sheep. Now at daybreak, the shepherd would rise and would stretch, and then he would lead the sheep to a place where they could find green grass and fresh water. He was a shepherd 24-7, 365 days of the year. But at the sheepfold, he would also become the gate. And Jesus said, I am the door, he is the gate. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved and will go in and go out and he will find pasture. Now, if you stop and think for, about that for a moment, if anyone enters in by me, he will be saved. And that's a purpose of a sheepfold, isn't it? The shepherd brings a sheep into the sheepfold to protect them from wild animals, to protect them from thieves and from their own foolishness, foolishness too at times. Inside the sheepfold, with the shepherd lying across the opening, the sheep had little to fear. Outside the sheepfold, there was danger, and that gate spelled safety. That sheep was home free. And Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved. Now, only a sheep that finds themselves in danger can fully appreciate that promise. Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved. And you know, I think that that's about as good a promise, as good a promise as you can get. Then Jesus says that the sheep that enter in by him will go in and they will go out and will find pasture. That's a wonderful promise too. A sheepfold is a safe place, but if you're in there all the time, it could soon start to feel like a prison. We need to be safe, but that isn't our only need. We also need a little freedom the opportunity to wonder, to explore, to have a little adventure, to nibble green grass and to sip fresh water. A good shepherd leads the sheep to places where they can do these things under the shepherd's watchful eye. The shepherd keeps the sheep safe, even in open pasture. 
And Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved and will go in and go out and will find pasture. Jesus is promising two things. The first is safety and the second is green pastures. Jesus promises both if we follow him. Jesus promised to save us and to lead us to pasture. So are these promises true? I think it amounts to this. He invites us to become members of the kingdom of God, to become children of the king. He offers to transform our lives and to make us new creatures in God. Then in that kingdom, in that sheepfold, he provides us a security that has no end. He provides us pasture that sometimes feeds the body, but always nourishes the soul. Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved and will go in and go out and he will find pasture. I came, he says, that they may have life and may have it abundantly. That was his promise. And I'd like to say that many of us here today have tried him, have experienced him and found that his promise is true. Amen. Could we sing together our next hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
We continue our service today with our prayers for the people. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray that there will come a day when your voice will be heard and recognised in every corner of the earth. There are many who know the harsh voice of hunger, the deafening voice of war, or the cruel voice of oppression. There are many who know the hollow voice of materialism, the clamorous voice of power, and the fickle voice of fame. It is our prayer that all of these voices will be hushed and the voice of truth, justice, and mercy will ring out clear. We pray for those who cannot hear your voice above the noise. We pray for all those who seek to hear and respond to your voice and bring change and renewal to their part of the world. We pray. Give them strength and endurance and keep their minds clear and their ears alert until your voice of love is heard in all the world. Amen. And Chaplain Malcolm is now going to lead us in praying together the Lord's Prayer. Chaplain Malcolm. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us join together in singing our final hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus.
our words of mission and blessing. Go out into this day with the voice of God in your ear, the comfort of Christ in your heart, the presence of the word in your mind, and the joy of the Spirit in your whole body. Amen.